And then we turned to the left and there's just this monstrosity of a climb and he was just on his bike and he went... One of the guys that they will always be part of the Wolfpack. I think he's the only bike rider I know that the crash never made him a, a worse bike rider. And then he got turned to me and he said, Phil, explain them. I'm going to sprint on that climb. We saw he had something more on the other I realized that this is why I, I work so hard. It's not to finish on the podium, but uh, to try to win it. We discovered Julian in the cyclocross in Brain, I think. He was 17. We were tipped by, by Johan Molly and uh, we were there with uh, Johan Mousse, with Wilfried Peters. They were yelling his name and then he was looking behind him and said, who knows me here? And then he was there on the van of the team with two riders and shaking from the cold and said, yeah, take, take, uh, wash yourself and maybe he can come tomorrow to the service course. He came and we agreed and we put him in the Devo team where he had a lot of talents, but we saw that he was a little bit above the others. And one, after one year, we brought him to the, the big team. I didn't know that a uh, few months uh, later, I will sign uh, for uh, Omega Pharma Quickstep, the, the World Tour team. That moment was like, yeah. I saw the, the, the rider leaving for training and uh, with the, the, we had the same bikes and uh, was a few big names at that moment. I cannot imagine, uh, I didn't imagine that I would be part of the team the, the season after. It's one of the guys that they will always be part of the Wolfpack. I still remember the first time when he signed this contract as a <laughs> young little kid that he arrived in, in service course. We were there. He came down with Patrick and just, yeah, we knew him from the development team but just from, from far. But immediately you felt like this guy is a family man. So he's, he's talking to us, he, he trusts us. And since the beginning, it was with Molly. He was always with us and around. When he first came to the team, Julian has immediately that kind of uh, magic that he always had in all his, uh, in all his career, in all, in all the, the history that he has with us. You could see immediately that he has a bright future in front of him. But I think Julian is, is quite unique. He's a very open character. He's very jumpy. He cannot sit five minutes on his, uh, on his chair. It improved over the years, but in the beginning it was quite crazy. He couldn't sit still. Uh, you saw it also on the bike. You still see it on the bike. He's a very nice person to work with. He's always open. He's an open book. On and off the bike it was really pleasant to work with him. It's just the way he is. You, you see it's, it's not fake. Um, I think also if you ask, we are with 90 people in the team. I think 60 of them would say they have a unique bond with Julien. We saw he had something more than the others. And yeah, since then, uh, it was only going upwards. Mais à Arban, c'est un autre jeune et brillant Français qui gagnera l'étape, Julien Alaphilippe. Tour de l'Ain, the last uh, stage, I was wearing the, the white jersey and uh, in the final kilometers, the, the, the stage was hilly and a uh, few, few riders from the team in the final and I remember Romain Bardet attacks and uh, I follow him. We tried to, to close the breakaway, but I had uh, Carlos Verona. He was my teammate at that moment in the front already of the race. So I cannot really collaborate with uh, Romain Bardet. And uh, also I think it was Rigoberto Uran, Dan Martin. We were few few guys uh, in the front at the end uh, and uh, yeah, in the final kilometer kilometers. I took my chance, I attack uh, alone and uh, I took my first uh, pro win. He's just had a look around, he can see that he's clear, so he's, as long as he can hold on to that wheel, he's all right. The year after, the team decided to, to put me on uh, all the Arden Classics. As a domestic, you know, like uh, I remember that I have to pull with uh, Tony Martin during my first I'm still gold race. 
it was super nice uh, feeling to to work for uh, great uh, great leaders and um, even if I did uh, the job early in the race. Michal Kwiatkowski! Michal Kwiatkowski! Out sprints Michael Matthews and Greg Van Avermaet. And then after the race, I brought him to the airport and we were in the car talking and I could see, you could see immediately when a rider has a future in front of him. He was there, his legs, you know, he was really uh, talking with his legs, still talking with his legs, still, still having that kind of uh, physical attitude of a leader. And he said to, he said, Julien, what's going on? I mean, you should be happy. Great result for you in your first Amstel. And he said, yeah, uh, yes, I'm happy for, for Michal, but yeah, and one, one day I won't come back here and win this race. He didn't win that race, but I would say that he won other great races in his career. I felt that I, I enjoy uh, racing on this uh, type of parkour and uh, I was really looking forward to, to do it again the, the week after on Flesh and then I finished second on the top the, of the Mur de Wii. Sunday for, for La Doyenne, Valverde won and I finished second and um, I did some work also during the race for Michel. He was uh, our uh, leader. And then I understood that uh, it's uh, maybe a type of race that I, I should uh, uh, target because I, I love it. And uh, with my characteristic, it was uh, the beginning. I think it was also my first uh, difficult winter. I think I had the, the mononucleosis. It was not so easy to come back, if I remember well. Then I, I won Tour of California. Was, it was my first, I think, stage race victory overall. A great memories because uh, the atmosphere there was uh, super nice. We had a super good team and um, I really enjoyed it to be there and to win a stage and win uh, the GC was uh, special for me. So a few weeks after, it was the, the moment for me to take my first Tour de France as a Frenchman was uh, really special and uh, super excited, super motivated uh, to really start my uh, second part of my career, to be at the start of uh, my first Tour de France. So with Julien, of course, we had, we had some bad, he also had back injuries, some back crashes. Of course, we had the one in Tour de France, but we also had one in, um, in the Tour de France. I think many people will remember the picture where he was hanging like a, like a climber on the, on the rock. So he really survived that. But he had one big advantage because usually when the rider crashes, it always sticks a little bit to the skin. But that I never saw with Julian. Uh, when he was recovered, he was still back on the bike, still the same bike rider that he was before, which is also quite unique. That's also said something about his, yeah, his balance, his balance on the bike. But also, he think, I think he's the only bike rider I know and knew that the, a crash never, never made him a, a worse bike rider. I remember that year was a, a good uh, beginning of the season for me. My first yellow jersey in Paris-Nice. And then I lost it the last uh, stage on the uh, Col de la Couillol. I still remember the discussion uh, I had with Tom Steele during Paris-Nice. He wants uh, want me uh, in uh, Milano San Remo. It was the last one of Tom Boonen, I remember. And then I was like, yeah, I want to do it. I, I want to try uh, every race. and. Uh, I never did San Remo, so I go to Milano. At San Remo, I finish uh, third. The, the year that uh, Peter Sagan attack on the Poggio, and I close uh, the gap with uh, Kwiatkowski, and we arrive uh, almost together on the same, uh, on the same line, and uh, Kwiatkowski won Peter second, and uh, I finish third. Then uh, after that, I had to, I need to add uh, surgery on my uh, knee because of a crash uh, during Pays Basque. The pain uh, yeah, was there and uh, I have to be operated. Unfortunately, I miss uh, the Tour de France that year. But I was uh, super motivated to take part of my first uh, Vuelta uh, with the goal to try to win a stage and to be ready for the World Championships and uh, Lombardy. So yeah, I won a stage, Zore de Cati, full gas all day, big breakaway and uh, art final. And I won, uh, I won the stage. I was really happy. I think uh, 2018 was an important season for me because I won 
for the first time La Flèche Wallonne and uh, I remember the feeling at the beginning of the season uh, even during the, the team camps in the winter that that was the year I really want to try to, to take a step up and uh, I did a lot of podium and a lot of second place behind uh, big riders and I was really motivated to take my first big uh, victory and uh, I start the season early I think in Argentina, Colombia, my first uh, victory on on the top of Mur de Vie. So that victory was super uh, yeah, emotional for me and uh, I realized that this is why I, I work so hard. It's not to finish on the podium, but uh, to try to, to win it. Uh, that tour also I felt super good. We did a big uh, training camp, a lot of recon. At that moment during the, the recon, I, I didn't know that I, I will have to fight for the Polkado jersey, but at the end, the two stage win I took uh, was uh, two stage that I did during uh, recon. So I did uh, yeah what I have to do uh, during the race. The fact that I did recon also helped me a lot to attack and to take the points, important points for the, the Polkado jersey. And at the end, uh, day after day, it became a, a goal to, to keep it uh, until Paris. It was an amazing tour for, for the team and for me, and uh, really special to be uh, on the Champs-Élysées with the, the Polkado jersey. 2018, 2019 was my two prolific seasons. I, I took a lot of victories. Yeah, San Sebastian, just one week after the tour, where I finished the tour completely exhaust, but uh, I managed to to take uh, the winners in San Sebastian. But after that, I remember also to, to start to be tired. I think I, I still won Tour of uh, Britain and Tour of Slovakia, but uh, then I was empty for, for the World Championships and uh, my season was finished. But it was a beautiful year. 19 was a crazy year for me for different reasons, but in terms of result and uh, in terms of performance that I think uh, I was on my uh, best uh, level until uh, that moment and uh, also really super motivated and hard with myself with the, the things that I planned in my head for to be ready and uh, I won uh, the Strade Bianchi. That's how you get it done! On quick step once Two stage in Tireno Adriatico. Ala Philippe, the winner of Strade Bianchi, is going to take the win here and with it the 10 second time bonus. Ala Philippe in position. Ala Philippe it is! Ala Philippe and Viviani between. It's unbelievable. San Remo. Ala Philippe still at the front. It's going to be in. Stop with uh, an amazing teamwork before uh, the attack uh, in the poncho. This day is really like for me unforgettable. The feeling also when you win, but uh, all day was a, a special feeling. Direction the Tour de France with a big motivation and uh, already a little bit more of experience. Again, team camp uh, on altitude, recons. I was ready to, to really give uh, everything during uh, July and uh, I took my first yellow jersey with the, my first stage victory. The third stage, I think, was a uh, bench Epernay, the yellow dream starter. And it's Ella Philippe who wins. <laughs> the toast of Epernay, though, was Julien Ala Philippe, the 85th Frenchman to wear the iconic yellow jersey. When he won, he won always in a special way. You could see when he won, it was like with a little bit more punch than somebody else. It was uh, so emotional, so nice for me to to realize uh, one of my cycling dream and uh, to see also the, the joy and the happiness from everybody uh, around me in the team, but also with the supporters, the, the fans. And uh, at that moment, I took uh, day after day until the moment I lost the, the jersey for a few seconds on the top of La Planche des Belles Filles. I decided to to have nothing to lose and uh, to attack a uh, few days after. I attack, I, I uh, took a few seconds at uh, 10 or 15k to go with uh, Thibaut Pinot. He, he was with me. He went with me and uh, Thomas de Ghent won the stage. Thibaut Pinot did a nice move for the GC and I took the yellow jersey back. That was a special day.
every day pass every day I still uh, in yellow so just because of that my Tour de France was amazing because it's a special feeling to be yellow jersey on the Tour de France the team did uh, an incredible job to control the race because to be yellow jersey it's also quite a lot of responsibility and uh, for me it's one of the most beautiful jerseys in cycling with the the rainbow one so I fight until the end to keep it as long as I can and um, that was the day of the time trial which I did a recon a few weeks before actually during the recon I, I said to my teammates I love the, the parkour but I didn't know at that moment that uh, I will have to do the, the time trial full gas with the yellow jersey to, to keep fighting to, to keep it the, the yellow jerseys I think you you gain energy and motivation to, to have the yellow jersey on a, on a good parkour uh, for me I was ready to to destroy myself to, to go full gas to, to push the limit I ask uh, I did again a recon in the morning and it was quite hilly the first part and uh, quite straight and flat the second part with uh, only a last kick uh, 500 meters to go really steep little climb I remember what I have in my head uh, the motivation the the focus and um, I asked the mechanics to block on the big uh, chain ring. Do we need an inner chain ring just to get on that, that climb? And we did the recon and Julian came back. He said, just block it on the big ring. It's okay. If we want to go very big to do a sprint, they were saying it's way too big. And then Julian turned to me and he said, Phil, explain them. I'm going to sprint on that climb. And we were looking to each other like, is he going to make it? Because I was so scared to, to lose the chain or I, w I want to be focused only about my uh, my pain. <laughs> I cannot hear really well, but uh, Tom still on the radio. He told me that it's for the victory. And first, I was thinking he, he said this for to to motivate me. And uh, it's only on the last kilometer that. Uh, I understood that it was for the, the stage win. I wasn't watching the, the big screen at that moment. We heard this incredible noise, you know, coming from the screen and from the people on the finish line. I look at, I, I watch the, the screen and... And okay, we were there in the car and uh, there were so many people. And the, the crowd was crazy all the parkour. And then we turned to the left and there's just this monstrosity of a climb and he was just on his bike and he went. Mm, 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 mm. I just go full gas. He was like a machine. It's just flying. It's incredible. It's incredible. It was like uh, riding in a stadium. You better believe he most certainly does. And in this part of the world, well, we're not that far from birds. A belief is what this region is about, but it's spread throughout all of France. And maybe the clarion call has gone out globally. Philippe here is absolutely magnificent. He wears yellow, and indeed, he's going to be crowned today. This is phenomenal. Philippe is in his pomp on this Tour de France. What about that? That was a really special memory for, for me, but also for all the staff, all the, the people. I really still feel it. The energy was, was uh, amazing. I just uh, destroyed myself to, until the finish line and uh, it was a beautiful uh, victory because I didn't want uh, a lot of time trial. I think uh, only one in Paris -Nice and uh, one in uh, Argentina. Of course, it's not the same uh, level. But yeah, to, to take a yellow jersey after a victory on a time trial is not something that I'm used to, to do. And uh, when you can do it on the tour, it's, uh, it's for the memories, it's, it's forever. Oh, I finished completely empty but really really empty like 
After that, I still finished second uh, behind Thibaut Pinot. That was the day after the TT. And then I, I really surprised myself, but I also feel inside me that I was really tired and uh, exhausted. Like, I cannot really sleep uh, during the night. I was only the energy and uh, with the yellow jersey, you know, you, you, still, uh, you still have to fight until uh, there is nothing in the tank. And, uh, but the last week I felt tired and tired and tired uh, more and more. I knew that it will be really complicated to, to go direction Paris uh, and keep fighting because uh, the last two stages was for the, the pure uh, climber and uh, I lost uh, the, the, the yellow jersey and um, I finished in Paris completely destroyed. Yeah, that year was special for me, of course, personally, but also as a cyclist. Uh, so, yeah, some things that uh, you have to to deal with that. And I start uh, the Tour de France ready physically, but uh, a bit sad. Uh, but of course, full of motivation and uh, ready to try to win. And uh, second day in Nice, a good final for me and uh, I was super um, focused for, for that stage and the team uh, did a great job. I still remember, uh, yeah, everybody did a great job, but I still remember uh, Bob Youngers did uh, doing his last uh, big efforts on uh, cold days, I think, before uh, my last uh, move. And then I attack to go and try to win the stage. So I was there. The last few cases in the break, small breakaway with uh, Irshi and uh, Yetz, and I won uh, the sprint on the Promenade des Anglais. I dedicate that uh, stage victory for for my uh, father, and uh, it was a big uh, big emotion for me. I was proud that I I did it, and uh, also a memories and uh, emotion that I will never forget. A few days in yellow. Also something that you you enjoy and uh, and you you don't forget and uh, and then yeah I suffer more the last part of the tour it was a bit more difficult for me so I was also thinking a lot about the the World Championships in uh, Imola uh, one week after the end of the tour and uh, at the end of the tour I was so focused on the World Championships because I know that uh, with the grinta I have and all the efforts I did in the tour, if I recover well during the week, I can be ready to, to destroy myself there and to, to try to become world champion. Who was a, a dream for me, something that I always uh, uh, keeping in my head that I want to do it. I just did what I want to do. It's not easy to have a, a day like this in the career. I felt uh, directly that I was ready and uh, the French team my colleagues uh, did uh, an amazing job to support me until the, the last kilometers of the race. And uh, I go to take my uh, destiny. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I know what I have to do, wh where and when, and I just did it. And uh, I'm happy that, that it was uh, working. I used to really the Tour de France and everything before to, to, to come on the point that he wanted to to be in a conditional. And then, of course, his famous attack again, uh, where he dropped the others 10, 20, 30 meters. And uh, I never forget, I think I have even on my phone uh, a photo where everybody started crying. Bramatias first, of course, and then Vazi, and then everybody was so emotional. Philippe is going to win the world title. France have a world champion. He punches the air. Hola, this is just a tête. The monster. The monster. The monster. Impressionant. Congratulations. That's for sure the most uh, emotional year for me. Also special to start the season 
as a Rainbow champion with the jersey. Then to win the first stage of the Tour, a few days after the birth of uh, my son, that was a, a big emotion, a big goal for me. But when you realize this, it's uh, really something special and um, was so, so, so happy. Then also a bit hard to finish the Tour at the same level, but then yeah, super motivated for the last part of the season. With uh, in the small part of my head, uh, the dream to fight again for the Rainbow jersey. With the experience of one year with the jersey, I came there in love and so relaxed, ready, but uh, relaxed. And uh, I did a recon a few days or a few weeks before the World Championships with uh, the next T-Bar. My uh, former teammate and friend, I knew that uh, it's going to be a really hard day, really a demanding race, and uh, it will be not a sprint. One of the moments he was a bit sad was uh, 2021 during Tour of Britain. A few weeks after that race, uh, we had the World Championships in Leuven, 21. So what, that was really a big goal. So Tour of Britain was really a test to find out if the, the shape was well enough to, to go over there. And uh, he was, for sure he was good, but every stage he lost against Wout van Aert or another one. So every day was second or third. So he ended the Tour of Britain with a lot of dubs for the World Championships. And the week after, he did some small races in Belgium. And there he decided to go from the hotel to the race uh, after the car. So I was in front of him. From Tilt to Brakel to the start was like 30, 40k. Then he did the race. A few days after, we went uh, 60 kilometers after the motorbike to have some uh, high speed. And the week after, he, were, he becomes world champion. So in two, three weeks, we go from a hard moment to one of the most beautiful moments in his career. And for me, it was really nice uh, wonderful feeling to be a little part of it to to help him improving to that world championships so that was one of the harder moments but you see typical julian from every hard moment you turn it on to something positive he was not performing this year as he should but then you saw him growing again and a Leuven, a typical julian attacking quite too early you say yeah, he's crazy he, you're not he cannot do it 10 times and he did and did it again and did it again and did it again and at the end he, were, he did a solo and won. Yeah. But now he celebrates. He's going to defend his title. Julian Alaphilippe, double world champion for France. That was the most complicated season of my career for many reasons about uh, physical problems, but also personal problems, many crash, many sickness. I never was uh, at my level or performing uh, as I want. So. And then a very nasty crash with 60 k's to go, conditioning the rest of the race. Julien Alaphilippe was one of the big victims, so worried his opponents were about him that Roman Balde, his compatriot, decided to go and check on his health before even thinking of getting back on the bike. I was looking for one of my riders, but there were a lot of people screaming. Then I found Ilan van Wilde, who was one of our riders. I mean, I was taking care of him. And then I saw Bramati on the other side of the road. And Brahma was with his head in his hands like this. And I thought, as always, Brahma is overreacting. He's making a bit of drama. So I said, Brahma is not so bad, it's just a jaw. But then I walk to Brahma and I see down and there is one rider laying next to a tree and this was Julian. And he was pretty in pretty bad shape when we found him. And Bardet gave up his own ambitions, even when he was in good condition, to help uh, Julian. And that is uh, something you don't forget. And, yeah. yeah, he had uh, some broken vertebra, some ribs, both lungs uh, were pretty badly injured. And that was... Uh, a, not a very easy recovery and it was hit after hit after hit and always coming back. Um, this wasn't really easy, but Julien being an, an immortal optimist uh, always fought back with the same passion, the same love. So he did always uh, so in spectacular fashion. Was uh, the crash uh, where you, you feel that uh, you don't know if you will be a cyclist uh, after? So, yeah. After a long uh, travel in the ambulance, I, I arrived finally at the hospital and there uh, I asked and I think it was not finished yet, the, the race, I don't really remember. But uh, 
one moment I hear that uh, Remco won and uh, of course I was super happy for, for him and for the team. As a winner you, you still are you, you still are on your things, you know, like uh, you have the emotion, the the the, the hard work uh, pay off and of course you, you know that your teammates are enjoyed but you know that they are fine and you can you can still enjoy a bit the, the victory but uh, for the staff of course it's not that uh, you can dance and make party all night when you have two uh, riders uh, really injured so it was okay I said nothing to do just be patient and uh, I was lucky it can be it can be worse and uh, but yeah it was really tough year annoying year but at the end, I learned a lot also, uh, especially about myself. But um, was still uh, something nice to, to be there to help Remco, even uh, if it was only for the half of the race. But at the end, he, he won it. I was happy to, to give a small contribution on the success from him and from the team. Yeah, what I can say, that was a bad, bad season for me. Coming back to the Tour, that's always special and uh, with uh, a strong team, uh, we can say that Casper saved uh, our ass because uh, it was quite difficult Tour for us. It was just becoming stronger and stronger day after day, so he almost uh, took a two-stage win. Uh, the victory he took uh, was an amazing uh, way, like uh, it was supposed to be for the sprinters and uh, he just went with few guys less than one minute front of the peloton all day a block and he won the sprint so that was uh, something really special uh, that only Casper can uh, can do. I think uh, I knew it would be a special year for many reasons. First of all because I will be at the start of my first Giro d'Italia. It was something that I always want to do it. I was so happy to be there. The first part of the season didn't went really well like I want with the crash in uh, Strade Bianche. I managed to, to come back um, to still fight for a good spot in uh, San Remo. I knew it will be difficult to follow uh, the best rider like uh, like Pogacar or Van Der Poel. And, um, but yeah, I did my best and uh, I arrived for top 10, uh, even with a flat tire the last kilometer, but uh, that doesn't change anything. I was just at that moment happy to finish. And then, uh, yeah, I just uh, was so motivated for, for the Giro, trying to, stay, to win a stage, to discover this beautiful uh, Grand Tour. And, uh, and it was super nice. I took a, a stage win on a beautiful way because of uh, my maestri. My teammate of the day, I, I want to say, he was a, he's a rider from um, from Polti, and uh, we did together like 100, more than 100k together, only with two. And um, he make uh, this victory special. Also, he was a big part of uh, the job we did, and uh, and for me to to be at my first Giro winning winning a stage with the help of all my teammates uh, at the beginning of the stage, everybody was proud and happy, and and also me, I I, I really enjoy that day. I I took a lot of uh, pleasure to ride on this way, and uh, was nice. I will remember the good moments, not forget the sad moments, not forget, but I can put it in my head, I can, I can put it uh, backwards. And um, I'm sure, I'm quite sure, if you meet us in the future, it will be always in a nice meeting. I, I wish him all the best, but he, he may not beat us too much. <laughs> but uh, for me, he will be always be the kid here on that we discovered at 17 and uh, I will remember the good things. He has an amazing career. He's very emotional, yeah. one of a kind. It's hard to to really describe him, but words, you, you have to see him to, to know how he is. You remember when he did on top of Tourmalet when he saw uh, the French president and he was like blinking his uh, eyebrows. Yeah, typical Julien. From 2017, 18, 19, 20, the way he built his career, like slowly improving, 
more and more first places, always in the big moments there. He, he lived for the big moments. For me, maybe the best moments are like we were in the same room the day after what the race and we were in our beds 10, 30, 11 awake discussing each other how, how we're gonna do it, what we're gonna do, where are we going to accelerate, where are, are you going to attack. And the day after, he, he does it like we, we planned the night before. Well, and also Landerno, when he won the yellow jersey in the World Champion, uh, World Champion jersey, was also a really nice moment. I think maybe that day for me will maybe be the most memorable because I, I paced myself to the front and I asked, asked them at the gesture, like, come on my wheel, I do one last effort, a, a block. Like we discussed the night before and then his physical capacities were, or are, yeah, impressive. Well, another moment I, I do remember, also 2019, I think, in the Tour de Pays Basque, Julien, the bunch exploded and we were in, small group in front, 30, 40 guys. Julien has a flat tire in the back, we come on to run about and his bike goes all completely aside. I see it, I'm just behind him. Instantly, I, I gave him my bike. If, the, if, if there I, I did not give my bike, he would never have come back to, to win the stage. But whatever happens, like next year, when we see Julien popping up at the race, uh, he will be the same Julien. If you have, as a Swanier or just as a man, a bad period and you see Julian entering the room and you see his face on uh, you, his, you see the smile on his face maybe you need to laugh because you know it's it's uh, it's a real laugh on his face and not uh, another fake one so yeah that's the, the most what I will remember also when Julian leaves his his uh, his smile Julian was a rider or is a rider even when it was a hard stage or an easy stage legs were always broken they were not broken, but always the same when he come into the room. Uh, Kevin, I'm dead. Kevin, I'm dead. Kevin, I'm destroyed. But then, how more he was destroyed, in his words, you know how better he is uh, the day after that uh, in the race. Uh, so, typical Julian, uh, never with a good feeling on the table, but afterwards, he was strong as a, as a horse again. Uh, not because of my massage, but just because it's Julian. You know, I'm still in the same village the next year, the same house. We don't live far away from each other, so every time, every minute, you're welcome. I think Julien is a very special place in the team, not only for his victories, but he also had that charisma, that, that extra, that not many riders have. Everywhere he came with him, everybody knew him. He always gave people a smile. It's always special when you have a young rider who really makes his career in a team for so many years. That's always special, but you see him grow, you help him grow, the whole team makes him a better bike rider from year one till till now. That's always special, but, but also outside of the race. I mean, he's one of the guys you will, you will never forget and you will always be happy that you could work with him. So within the team, besides his many victories he's had, also as a person, you will never forget him. Also, Julien is one of the only guys, it can be November or whatever, and you just get a picture Julien sends you a picture out of the blue saying I will for always this will be one of my favorite moments and he doesn't there's no follow-up by the way I also need something it's just an honest memory that he wants to share with the people he loves. I remember like that that first training camp I went to as a, as a guest rider while I was still a continental rider I was I was out on a on a group ride uh, with him and on the way back towards the the hotel the last hour or hour and a half or whatever it was the guys started to just do half wheel each other we were pushing more and more on the climbs and we were going harder and harder and harder and then eventually i i was sitting next to julian and uh, eventually we got to the front and it was like on the coast uh, coast road up and down uh, back towards towards calpe and we were going so fast uh, pushing 450 for uh, 480 watts on the on the climbs uh, next to each other with uh, everybody sprinting behind the wheels. And uh, yeah, I was just, uh, obviously he was, I was uh, so a block just trying to follow him, but uh, I managed to do it, I stayed next to him. And uh, when, uh, when we were then 10 minutes from the hotel, uh, Brian Holm passes us with the car because he had done the whole training behind us. 
And he said, uh, yeah, if you idiots are gonna go so fast and you are uh, 45 minutes ahead of the scheduled uh, training time, then you can go right here and then you can do an extra loop. I'll go back to the hotel and I'll see you there. <laughs> so in the end, we, we uh, ourselves and we had, to, well, we had to continue training, but uh, Julian was there. You're strong. It was uh, really impressive, and like for me, as a as a amateur, it was amazing to get such praise from a, from a champion like uh, like Julian. And and I've seen it every year since. Like he's he's so good at being approachable, and 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 he's just genuinely super super nice person to be around and he uh, I think he enjoys uh, enjoys helping out the younger guys in the team as well and I think after 10 years was maybe the, the moment to changing a little bit here to to pop up his morale again but I know he's uh, he will always be a kid of us do you have, maybe have a final a final uh, message your thoughts on your years with the team Nothing special. I don't want to start because I will get emotional and I will forget uh, some bodies and I don't want. So I will be quick. But uh, of course, I want to thank uh, to thanks everybody uh, that I meet during the last 10 years. Not only meet, but also that we work together. We spend so many time together. We create uh, memories for life with uh, victories, but uh, good moment, bad moment. And uh, anyway, I'm really grateful for, for the time we spent together. I will never forget that for sure. It was a, an honor for me to spend this, uh, all these years with you guys, uh, all the teammates, former teammates, staff, medical staff, mechanician, really also so many people that nobody saw because they work hard in the shadow. I will forget peoples and I don't want to, to, to forget peoples because everybody was so important uh, and still so important in the development of the team. It's also why uh, us riders we won race, it's because also all of your hard work on the late night and uh, early morning. So I'm proud and uh, grateful that I can uh, have support from you guys uh, on my best days on the bike with beautiful victories, but also on the difficult uh, times where uh, the times was uh, long and uh, Annoying, you were you were still there, so I will never forget, and I will always cheering for uh, for the team. Yeah, to have the yellow jersey on on me, it's just uh, something I never imagined before. <laughs>